Thank you for tuning in to another SitePoint screencast on React.js. Today, we're talking about Webpack. So your first question is probably, why do we need Webpack? And the biggest reason for React is that we need something to handle the JSX transformation. When we write React components, we write them in JSX, and the browser doesn't know how to understand that. It's inadvisable to use the JSX transformer in production, so we need something, a build step, that'll take our JSX code and transform that locally into plain JavaScript. That's where Webpack comes in. It's a general purpose tool that'll allow us to do that using the Babel loader. Enough talk, let's dive in. Let's start by creating a new node project. We'll create and CD into a my app directory. Then we'll run npm init. This creates a new package JSON file, and for now, we'll just select all of the defaults. Now that we have a package JSON file, we'll install Webpack and React local to our project. Let's clear the screen for a little space. Now that we have Webpack installed locally, we can run it from our node modules directory. We call node modules.bin webpack. This screen shows us all of the commands that we can run using webpack. By default, you can run the webpack command and just give it two arguments, the name of the file you'd like to transform and the name of an output file. Let's create an index.js file with a simple log statement in it. Now let's run that through Webpack. And we'll name our output file browserbundle.js. You can see the Webpack runs very quickly and it outputs information about what it did. Let's take a look at our browser bundle file. Webpack created this output file that has a whole module system for the browser. This is really cool. And the first module contains our log statement. Now, before we go any further, let's test that this file even works in the browser. We'll just create a bare minimum HTML index file that loads this browser bundle script. And we'll open this up to test it out. Open a console and see that hello is logged out. Perfect. Now calling Webpack from our node modules directory every time is going to be very cumbersome. Fortunately, NPM has a solution for this in scripts. There's even a special script reserved for this type of process called start. Let's update our package.json file to use the start script to run the Webpack command and watch for changes on the file system. We'll define the start script and have it run webpack with the watch flag. Here we don't have to call webpack through the node modules directory because this start command already does so. Let's save, open up a new window and try it out. We get an error, but this is a good thing. We don't have a webpack config file set up yet to tell it what file to build and where to build it to. Webpack looks for a special file in the root of the project called webpack.config.js. The configuration itself can be pretty basic. We'll start by exporting a module. In it, we'll define the entry file, in this case, index.js, as well as the output. Output's an object. And inside that object, we'll define the file name which is browserbundle.js. Let's save that and run npm start again. Now Webpack has the configuration it needs to run this command. Now this whole setup is in service of preparing React components for the web. So let's make a simple component and see what we need to do next. Go back to our code and open up the index.js file. For now, let's just define our component here. 
I'll create a new React component called hello. It has a render method that returns a simple div with hello in it. And at the bottom, we'll use render to mount it to the document body. Now, because we're not loading all of our script tags individually into our HTML file anymore, we need to tell this file how to include React as a module. We can do that at the very top by defining React as a local variable to this script and telling Webpack where to find it on the file system. Now, because we installed React locally earlier, we can just call it by name and it'll do the resolution automatically. Let's save this and see what happens. Our build failed, but predictably so. If you look at the error, it's complaining about syntax, unexpected token left angle bracket. And that's because we haven't told Webpack how to transform JSX. We do that through Webpack loaders. Let's open up a browser and search for Webpack Babel loader. This first result is fine. Here we can find instructions for how to use the Babel loader in our project. Babel is the transformer for JSX that's actually being used to build React now. We can install it by running npm install Babel loader save dev. Stop our server and run that command. Back to the browser, we can find out how to use this. We can quite simply copy and paste this into our Webpack config file. We'll paste it right below our output section. Let's save that and run npm start again. Our build completed beautifully. Now, all of this is in vain if it doesn't work in the browser. Let's test it out. Back in our browser, we refresh and get hello rendered right to the document. In this video, we covered the absolute shortest path I know to get Webpack processing your JSX files. We learned how to install Webpack, configure it, and teach it how to use JSX by using the Babel loader. Webpack is extremely capable so whether you're building a component or an entire application, I very much recommend it. I hope you found this video very useful. Thank you so much for watching.